Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead where today we are going to be continuing our experiments with the solar cooker that we showed how to make on a video that launched last week. Um, today is an overcast day, the clouds are thin, um, and we will probably have periods of sunshine during the day, but I wanted to run the experiment anyway just to see how successful these might be on kind of a cloudy day. I started both of these off, we'll get over to the other one in just a minute, um, started these off early this morning, and I'm going to show you the difference and what we plan to do with them. And this all has to do with food security and emergency preparedness. So we'll be back in just a moment. This is the one that I showed in the video on how to make these solar cookers. We've been actually experimenting throughout the week. Last night we had a meal of chicken and rice um, cooked in this pan that you see right here. And it was just perfectly lovely. Jim started it while I was still at work at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And we were sitting down to our meal by 5.30 or 6 o'clock. And it was perfectly cooked. The meat had been put in. The chicken breasts had been put in raw and they were completely cooked. The rice was done and it was a delicious meal. I checked the temperature when I got home and it was about uh, 203 degrees right here. So that's about our boiling point at 5,000 feet and it was hot and steamy. So we know that it's going to do a really good job on at least some things. Now you may notice that I have altered things from when I put it in when I showed it in the original video. I have a uh, two one-gallon Pyrex bowls. One is inverted over the other one and the pot is on the inside. Everything I have read says to use a thin-walled dark pot. So that is this setup. So today we're going to try to bake bread. I don't know if we'll be able to. It depends on how hot we can get these in an overcast day. So if we can't bake them in this one and the other one I'm going to show you in just a moment, then we will do something else with that bread off-grid. So we have other things set up that we can also use in this kind of an event. I've been taking the temperature. When I brought it out this morning it was 45 degrees. It is now 60 degrees. It's 1030. I started it at 930. And so it's not ready for bread at this point in time but it's still climbing and we have it aimed for the sun and we will follow the sun as it goes this way throughout the next several hours so we'll see if we can bake bread so now we're going to move over to the other one and I'll show you what we have set up over here this is the original one that I made as practice before I showed the video of making the other one and in here I have my uh, my small size cast iron Dutch oven. And several people in the comments suggested that we try a Dutch oven. A Dutch oven certainly isn't thin-walled, and the thing about a Dutch oven is it takes a long time to heat up, but the good um, part about that is that it holds the heat for a very long time. I have it in a turkey bag. Uh, the inverted Pyrex bowls seem to work better, but I only have one set of those. So I'm having to use a turkey bag, which is the heat-resistant plastic. It is just tied closed right here. So I'm back at the first one now, and I'm just going to check. I have this uh, thermo thermometer running inside the pot. It is at 122 degrees, and so it is climbing. Last time I checked, it was about 102. This one I have to check with a little bit differently. I only have one of those thermometers set up, so I use Jim's handy dandy. And these were put out here at the very same time. It is essentially the same solar cooker, almost in the very same place. So I'm just going to lift the lid on this. It's warm. And the internal temperature there is still climbing. 
it's about 77 78 degrees so as you can see it is not heating up as fast as the other one is the sun has is coming out from behind a cloud I can tell So I'm going to make the bread dough in about an hour. That will give these about two hours to have heated up. At that time, we will check the temperature again. And if it is approaching temperature where we can cook bread, we'll put bread in both and see how they do. Otherwise, we will go over to our uh, patio where we have some other cooking methods set up and we will cook our bread over there still off grid. So we'll see you back here soon. The solar cookers have been at it now since 9.30. It is now 1.30. So that's four hours they've been out there heating up. We're approaching 300 on one of them. We're in the 200s with another one. We're going to go ahead and try it. So I have done these in the baskets this time for round and smaller loaves of bread. These two will be going in the solar cookers. <clears throat> And this one is just going to go right here in this oven. I have a great big bubble there. I'm just going to pop it because I'm, I don't want it there. Okay, there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this one in a Dutch oven that is already in the oven. It has been preheating to 465. And so this one is going to be cooked traditionally the way I do these round loaves of bread. So you can meet me over here at the oven and we'll get this going. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of a flour on the top of this one. And I'm going to reach in the oven and remove the lid to this Dutch oven. And it always smokes just like that. Then I'm going to turn this out into my hand bend it in half and put it in. Lid back on. And this one we will check in about 25 minutes. It should be almost done. We'll remove the lid, let it go about 10 minutes longer and it will be done. Now let's take the others outside and get them going. This one is just at 212. I thought it was in the 300s, but it is not. So we're going to do it anyway. In. All right, here's the bread. Comes in. Lid back on. Okay. I don't know how much hope I have for these loaves of bread but the sun is out really nicely right now. So maybe we will get lucky, we'll see. I have to figure out what the performance limitations are on these before I can start recommending what they be used for. I already know they cook casseroles and soups and things just great. If they don't do baked goods, then we'll figure out something else. So we'll be back when these are more ready to take out of the oven. The loaves of bread have been in about an hour and 15 minutes, and I didn't think they were anywhere near done. And Jim told me I better go check, so I did. And um, the one over here in the turkey bag uh, with the cast iron, the bread itself is only up to about 
Jim, what did I say? About 145, 150. And so it still has a little ways to go before the bread is done. Then I came over here, and boy, was I surprised. Um, so we're going to look again on this while the... Um, The thermometer itself registers, which is the inside of the pan, but not in the bread. It registers only 201. You have gloves? I, don't need, I, I have a hot pad right here. Okay. <clears throat> the bread itself registers 187, 189. It's almost done. And so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to remove this. Well, no, it's, the bread is on the top of it, so I won't do that. I'm going to leave the top of uh, the pan off. I'm going to put the bowl back in place. That way we'll see if we can get some browning on that bread. So we'll come back and check in just a little while. This smells fabulous. It didn't brown much more, but we're gonna take it into the kitchen anyway because it is done. So I'll just remove this copper bowl. Well, it browned on the bottom. Looks pretty good. It does look really nice. That's the um, uh, spray oil that I put on the bottom of the pan. And so here it is compared to the one that I fixed in our regular oven, which turned out beautiful. And um, we will come back when we get the other one out, and then we will compare all three. We used this brick to weigh down the whole thing. We were getting a little bit of wind earlier. So I don't know why I'm using the hot pad on that. Because it's hot. It's been <laughs> in the sun for hours. Okay. Don't want to burn your fingers. So we're going to... Check this one to see how it's doing. Oh, it's very hot in here. The steam had really puffed this one up. Not quite ready. We're going to give it about another half hour. And then, ready or not, out it comes. We barely brought this in. It had another half hour. So we're going to check to see what the bread temperature is. Woo! Hot in there. Yay, 190. Okay, so let's see. We'll just turn it out. Not very browned on the bottom. Okay, so here are our three breads. This is the one that we baked in the house, and it was baked for 20 minutes. This is not the usual recipe that I use for this artisan style bread. This is my regular bread recipe. And so this one, because I was going to cook it as long as I did my artisan bread, got a little bit burned on the bottom after 20 minutes. But it was up to 203 internal temperature, so this one is very done. This one was also way up above um, 190. It was about 196 when I took it out. It looks lovely on the bottom. It has a nice brownish on the bottom um, and around on the sides. <clears throat> the top did not get too browned. This looks like crusted bread. It's tiny, tiny bit, hardly at all, colored on the bottom. So this is the one that was in the uh, cast iron. It raised a little bit more. This one is more flat. Speaking of flat, uh, today I've been answering comments. Jim usually does most of it when I'm at work, but I was answering comments and I've had today already two requests for us to show naan. And naan is another flat bread just like pita. And so we will be doing that. Um, I am determined to try to get a, an inexpensive solar cooker that will do yeast breads if that's what people want. That's what I want. But I have other ways of doing it as well. 
So um, we won't have the luxury of having a regular oven, at least I won't, if the grid goes down long term. But let's check the crumb on all of these to see what we've got. This is wonderful, of course. So there we have that one. It looks just great. So let's see about this one. This one is cooled now. It sounds wonderful. Sounds like it has a nice crust. Certainly a little flatter. It's a little more dense on the inside, but it is completely done. And so that's very nice. This one I'm going to cut even though it's warm. So this one is not too bad. That may be a little bit gummy right there, but this would work. After we left this, after we let it cool, we could toast this, we could make French toast out of it. There are a lot of things that we could do. So I, I would say that I am now pleased with the way that our do-it-yourself solar cookers are doing with these yeast breads. Um, these work. I'll work on pretty later, but at least now I know that they will do yeast breads that can be used in grid down times with no other energy source other than the sun. If we are lucky enough to have the sun shining. Now this was a fairly, um, it was overcast, the clouds were fairly thin, so the sun was coming through somewhat and we did have about one hour where the sun was unobstructed. So that is also inf good information to have. We started off this morning at 45 degrees when I um, took the ovens out there, or the cookers out there. <clears throat> it is now about 73 degrees outside. And so this is just a fairly normal spring day for us. It's overcast. And so if we can do this on under the conditions that we had today, I am sure that we can move forward and have prettier looking breads later on, but you know, pretty is optional if we're in grid down situation and just trying to survive. Um, we would be happy with any one of these three loaves. So I'm feeling terrific about that little solar cooker, knowing that it will do yeast breads. And we will keep showing you things that it will do. Um, I hope you will make one if it is at all in your area of interest so that you can try right along with us and post what you are successful at in comments so that we can all learn from one another. So thanks for being with us for this experiment and we'll, we will see you at our next video.